State on the banks of the Columbia River. She is your state sentinel and hailing from the Hood River Valley FFA chapter. Let's hear it for Gabby Santa Cruz. He is your state reporter hailing from the woods of Douglas County and the home of the Sutherland FFA chapter. Let's hear it for Lee Wiesenberg. Chapter. He is your state secretary. Let's hear it for Jensen Kimball. She is the second in command of our association. Let's give it up for our state vice president, Emma Rucker. And last but not least, the head of our association, Numara Una, your state president from the Baker FFA chapter, Courtney Raymond.
for that beautiful performance. Tonight's session chair has almost a strange love for Star Wars and playing his Xbox. Brilliant and unbelievably talented, he's someone you won't forget. While we may refer to him as the general, most of you have known him as your state reporter. Ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome Lee Wiesenberg to the stage. Life is full of questions, from what we should eat for lunch or where to school, and even as far as where we will end up in the future are questions we might ask ourselves on a daily basis. With so many challenging questions with every new day, quite often we find that we never have all the answers or solutions. I greatly admire those who can work through hard questions and problems in a calm and collected manner. When I think of a moment when I didn't stay calm during a problem, I think of when I was at home looking for my car keys on the day of my graduation prep. If we didn't show up for preparation, we did not walk on the big day. As an individual who likes to procrastinate getting ready, I didn't think to look for my car keys until about 10 minutes before I, I needed to leave. I usually kept my keys in the little bowl in my kitchen. When the keys weren't there, my heart rate decided to speed up just a little bit, and strangely enough, I started to get really sweaty. Whew. I tore up my house. I looked at my room, the kitchen, living room. I even looked outside. I looked around for what felt like two hours with no luck. Frustrated and really, really confused, I went and sat down and thought, Ouch! Jeez! Ooh. I stood up and felt my back pocket to find my car keys. <laughs> I think we've all had moments like this where something in our life goes awry, and instead of staying calm, we choose to completely freak out. Although I looked everywhere I thought my keys could have been, I neglected to look in the place that was arguably the most obvious and simple. The place right in front of me, or in this case, behind me. <laughs> Sometimes the answers that we are searching for are much closer than we realize, perhaps right in front of us. To make your mark is to identify every possible opportunity to include every possible answer. Tonight, we are going to recognize individuals who truly understand what it means to stick with what they know. We will hear the results for the co-op quiz, extemporaneous speaking, and advanced and beginning parliamentary procedure. Later, we will listen to our state vice president, Emma Rooker, give her retirement address wholehearted. Yeah. We will also thank the parents of the current state officers and present the 2018 state proficiency and star awards. And lastly, we will be introduced to the top 10 candidates who are still on track for a position as an Oregon FFA state officer. <laughs> However, we would not be able to recognize these amazing individuals who have made their mark in this session tonight if it wasn't for the help of our amazing session sponsor, Mog Farms and star partner, Les Schwab Tires. Let's give our session sponsor and star partner a round of applause. Oregon FFA, let's get ready to use the answers that are right in front of us and make our mark. Hard work, dedication, excellency, the H.H. H. Gibson Memorial Scholarship is founded on these characteristics and awarded to students who possess each of these traits. Having been an active advocate of young farmers and teachers, Professor Gibson truly believed in the future of agriculture. This scholarship is awarded to a student who has been actively involved in agriculture education throughout their high school career and also plans to study training in an agricultural field and likewise will graduate within one-third of their class. 
The recipient of this award is from Redmond, Chance Green. Congratulations, Chance. If one were to strike up a conversation with almost any FFA member, they would tell you that one of the biggest challenges is the gap of knowledge that divides the agricultural industry and the public. Some students, however, have taken it upon themselves to help bridge that gap and participate in the Oregon Ag in the Classroom Youth Awareness Literacy Event. Created to promote community agricultural awareness, students create projects based on topics that they feel need to be heard. After an application process, teams are selected and invited to a committee during state convention. This event is sponsored by Oregon Ag in the Classroom, who is dedicated to telling the story of Oregon agriculture. When put into action, their greater good includes providing training, resources, and free curri curriculum to teachers of K-12 through students in order to illustrate the Oregon agriculture industry that we know and love to students across the state. Please join me in thanking them for their efforts and support. Some of my fondest memories involve growing up in the place where my county fair was, between trips to the wash rack and several outfit changes between shows, and a few times around the Ferris wheel, there was only one job that was necessary every day. While most of my friends complained about this task, I eagerly signed up for this slot that was available. I knew and loved people, and I loved livestock as well, and nothing in the world made me happier than connecting the two. I spent hours in the sheep barn sweeping the runway shavings back to the pens and answering the questions of fairgoers. No matter how many times I had to tell people the difference between a sheep and a goat, or gently explain to someone the reason lambs wore muzzles wasn't because they would bite, but to keep them from eating foreign objects, I found a sense of pride in educating the people about our world, and I believe today's par participants feel the same way. Let's give our students another round of applause. Here presenting these awards is Jessica Jansen, the Executive Director of Oregon Ag in the Classroom. And now, and now for the results. In fourth place, the Burns FFA Chapter. In third place, the Union FFA Chapter. In second place, the Hermiston FFA Chapter. And in first place, the Echo FFA Chapter. As they exit the stage, let's give these members a final round of applause and thank our event sponsor, Oregon Agriculture in the Classroom, one last time. There are a few statements that no student in high school ever wants to hear, including, today we will be getting into groups for our next project, or today we have a pop quiz. But perhaps the most notorious and my least favorite statement, we will have a test next week. A future test meant a lot of studying. And while studying for me may have been a burden, this feeling is not the same for everyone. In fact, for some individuals, studying is not only a strong suit, but it is also fun. The purpose of the state co-op quiz is to give students a better understanding of the importance of agricultural management. To be successful, students need to understand and know the different types of agricultural businesses and the history as well as fundamentals of cooperatives. Each student has worked very hard to get to this point and make their mark with their newly gained knowledge by using the information that is right in front of them. This event would not have been possible without the generous support of our sponsor, Agricultural Cooperative Council of Oregon, as well as the support of our star sponsor, Grange Co-op. Let's give the participants, our sponsor, and star partner a round of applause. With us today is Suzanne Burbank from Wilco in conjunction with the Northwest Co-op Council to, to help with our award presentation. And now for the results. 
in fourth place. From Stanfield, Lydia Hurdy. In third place, from Madras, Jensen Comet. In second place, from Colton Otterhausen. And in first place, from Burt River, Anna Beachall. As they exit the stage, please help me in thanking our sponsors and congratulating our members one last time. The Oregon FFA Extemporaneous Speaking Career Development event is sponsored by our star sponsor, Northwest Farm Credit Services. Please help me in thanking our incredible sponsor. In sixth grade, I was a fairly shy kid. I really didn't like giving presentations in class, so when I did, it was pretty shaky and stutter-filled. One day in band, I decided I wanted to be the first spot trumpet player. My teacher told me to wait in my seat, and when class started, he shouted, Jensen would like to give us a little speech on why he should be the first spot trumpet player. My heart dropped, and I was shaking as I gave a speech that probably made little to no sense, and I definitely did not get that trumpet spot. Since then, I have learned how to speak publicly through events like extemporaneous public speaking. Being able to think on your feet and give a speech is an incredible task, and our finalists have performed extraordinarily well. Each of the finalists on stage will be given a microphone. When the recipients receive the microphone, they will introduce themselves by name and chapter, and then will give the introduction to their original speech. My name is Dylan Westfall, and I'm from the Hermiston FFA chapter. It never ceases to amaze me the way that any one individual can influence society today. Growing up, I always thought that to be the job of the big men on campus, the breadwinners, the scientists, the politicians. But today, as social media is becoming the communication force across the world, Anyone can stand up for what they believe in. Anyone can make a difference. From the shyest student in the back of America's classroom to the boldest individual protesting on the steps of the Capitol building, any voice can be heard and anyone can be influenced. But the more time we spend on social sites, the less time we spend talking about the important issues, such as the cannabis industry and how it impacts us as agriculturalists and understand how both sides of the story is affecting you. Thank you. I'm Garrett Stoneman, and I'm from the Nissa FFA chapter. Imagine the most monotonous task that you do in a day. Maybe it's just really hard, maybe it's really easy, maybe it's too boring, or maybe you just don't like to do it. Now imagine that instead of doing that task, you press a button and a machine does that task for you. Now, imagine on a farm where a lot of tasks may seem monotonous, boring, and like people just can't quite do them as effectively as other things. Imagine a farmer being able to take a machine like this and put it on their farm so that a person doesn't have to do that job. So that this job is done in a way that's not only more effective and more quick, but, well, it makes everything else on the farm easier and more effective. This may seem like a dream to some people, but to me, this is precision agriculture. My 
name's Katie Atia, and I'm from the Sandy chapter. In the past, things were different. If you look at even a couple decades ago, we did things completely abstract of how we do today. As we, as we move forward, we've learned more and found better ways of doing things. But what is the effect of this? There are less and less urban, rural places in America. Because of this, we are seeing less and less agricultural educators in the United States. If you look across all the states of America, there are less and less agri agricultural educators and positions going unfilled. For example, in Illinois in 2016, there are 650 open positions with only 450 being filled. Despite this, there is a solution. If we find interested students, support them through their journey, and keep strong chapter alumni, we can find a solution to the shortage of agricultural educators in America. Thank you. My name's Avery Openlander. I'm from the Culver FFA chapter. Imagine a catastrophic fire raging through Oregon's crop and rageland with no one to fight them. Imagine cattle brand inspections being non-existent and food safety and transportation needs being unaddressed. Over 1,800 jobs are going unfilled, both big and small, and major issues are being abandoned. Federal agency hiring freezes are going to be catastrophic to Oregon agriculture, economy, and public safety. Thank you. My name's Kaylee Welters, and I'm from the Sherwood FFA chapter. They are the support in our houses, the pages in our books, and the wood in the pencils. Trees are everywhere. They have been around since the beginning of time and have been a vital resource for the building of our world. Oregon's forests cover more than 30 million of the state's 63 million acre land base, accumulating for 48% of Oregon's land mass. But what most people don't realize is agriculturalists and the timber industry have been better able to conserve the little land we have in the U.S. that is used for timber harvest. Together, they, they develop precision practices that have changed the face of the timber industry by using new cutting methods, re reforestation after harvest, and protecting the future of their land, one tree at a time. Thank you. My name is Jonathan Vasquez, and I'm from the Silverton FFA chapter. There is a lot of things we can live without. Believe it or not, we can live without our phones. Heck, we can even live without having to change our underwear for five days. <laughs> Do I know this by personal experience? Uh, that's, uh, that's for you to decide. But one thing that we do need is agriculture. Agriculture is the foundation of our economy. And at the center of it all is free trade. Free trade agreement in a global economy is crucial and vital. Here in Oregon, we export 80% of everything that we produce. And out of that 80%, 40% of that is exported to international markets. We rely so much on free trade agreements in Oregon. On the flip side to that is because we rely heavily on free trade agreements through NAFTA, the North American Free Trade Agreement, is that there's a danger in it. What would happen if we woke up tomorrow and all of a sudden we were kicked out of NAFTA or any other free trade agreement that we have with our partners across the world? What would happen to the consumers? What would happen to the farmers? What would happen to us. Thank you. My name is Andrew Gamerkin, and I'm from the Eagle Point FFA chapter. There is a plague sweeping across this country. 
Symptoms include an increase in dropout rate, a decrease in college and vocational school enrollment, and a deficit in trade skills. This is not your normal epidemic. This is the result of a lack of career technical education classes. Career technical education prepares students for high wage, high demand careers by increasing the graduation rate for high school students and allowing students to develop hands-on skills that are necessary to closing the skills gap. Thank you. My name is Emily Nix and I am from the Oakland FFA chapter. My favorite part of growing up on a generational ranch was listening to my family tell stories of what the area used to be like. Take a step back. The year is 1970 and my grandfather, originally from California, decided to move his family to Oregon. In the 1970s, the economy was booming. Nearly one in 10 people were employed in agriculture and Oregon led the nation in the production of multiple commodities. Step forward to 2018. We now produce over 220 commodities statewide and because of our diversity, we are able to gain a high amount of agricultural products. Through, product, through high production though, comes a huge responsibility for our producers to hire laborers. And because Oregon has one of the highest minimum wages in the nation, it can be difficult for our producers to afford those laborers. Thank you. My name is Matthew Melskow from the Sanium Christian FFA chapter. In 2050, our Earth's population is set to reach a staggering 9 billion people. This means the farmers of tomorrow will have to produce 40% more food on 20% less land. We as agriculturists need to be taking advantage of every resource we have available to us. And one resource that could be available to us is horses through the legalization of federal horse slaughter. But what would that look like? Would it really make a difference? Last year, the BLM reported that there were 72,000 wild horses across our nation. What if we took advantage of those through meat? Well, the average horse weighs 1,700 pounds. Now, obviously, a Shetland pony is much less and a Clydesdale is much more, but the average is 1,700. Currently in Mexico, where federal horse slaughter is legal, they report that each horse yields 50% of its live weight in usable meat. This means that there are 60 million pounds of potential meat across our nation that could be used to feed our world. Not only are horses a wasted resource, they are wasting other resources. Last year, the BLM spent $81.5 million in wild horse management. The legalization of federal horse slaughter will not only take advantage of other or take advantage of this resource, but will also preserve other resources. Thank you. Let's congratulate our members on a job well done. And now for the results. In fourth place, from Hermiston, Dylan Westfall. In third place, from Sherwood, Kaylee Welters. In second place, from Oakland, Emily Nix. And in first place, from Eagle Point, Andrew Gamerkin.
As they exit the stage, let's give our sponsors as well as the participants of this event one more round of applause. Have you ever been in a situation where everything is in complete chaos? I know that I have. Sometimes this happens to me when I'm driving. I don't know what it is about driving, but sometimes it is straight up stressful. I mean, think about it. You have to be going the right speed, be in the right lane, have the right song playing, make sure the temperature is right, make sure your seatbelt is on, look around to see where other cars are, and the list goes on. Driving can be complete chaos. I have seen some FFA members over this past year that seem like they can handle chaos pretty well. And these next members coming on the stage for the state beginning parliamentary procedure career development event are definitely a few of them. Just like driving can be chaotic, so can the floor of a parliamentary procedure debate. This event would not be possible without the support from our award sponsors, Pam and Chuck Wilcox and Julian Tom Spoo, as well as our star partner through the Oregon FFA Foundation, Northwest Transplants. Join me in thanking our sponsors. I don't know about you, but when I'm driving, sometimes I have to turn the music down because obviously loud music makes it harder to see. Anybody else do that? <laughs> Sometimes multitasking is hard, but these parliamentary procedure participants excel at it. And now for the results of the 2018 Oregon FFA beginning parliamentary procedure career development event. In fourth place, the Bonanza FFA chapter. In third place, the North Clackamas FFA chapter. In second place, the Echo FFA chapter. And in first place, representing Oregon in the National Code of Conduct Career Development Event, the Dayton FFA Chapter. As they exit the stage, let's give our sponsors and the teams who participated another round of applause. One of my favorite ways that I spend spare time as a kid, and still do today, is hanging out with my friends. We would do things from seeing how high we could jump our bikes to watching ridiculous YouTube videos. We had no troubles coming up with a plan, but we just needed one thing to make these plans a reality. Our parents' permission. My friends and I had to become specialists at convincing our parents to let us go see our buddies. We developed multiple techniques, and we found that the most important part in these conversations with our parents is good evidence to back up our point. Just as my friends and I had to convince our parents with good evidence, these parliamentary procedure participants convince others on agricultural topics to agree with them. My friends and I could have definitely used some tips from these true experts of studying a topic and developing a debate for it. This event would not be possible without our award sponsor and star partner through the Oregon FFA Foundation, Northwest Transplants. One technique my friends and I used to convince our parents was having our friend bail us out and have them call our parents. This technique was rather successful if you had some good friends that would do it for you. Our parliamentary procedure participants don't have that ability to have their friends bail them out in this career development event, but they definitely have to rely on each other. And now for the results of the Advanced Parliamentary Procedure Career Development Event. In fourth place, the Dayton FFA Chapter. In third place, the Hermeson FFA Chapter.
in second place, the Malala FFA chapter. In first place, representing Oregon at the National FFA Convention, the Sutherland FFA chapter. As they exit the stage, let's thank our sponsor, Northwest Transplants, and congratulate these teams one last time. In the world that we live in, there are millions of incredibly difficult jobs. Being an underwater welder, brain surgeon, or maybe being an electrician are, are only a few of the thousands of difficult jobs that one can choose to do. Even the jobs listed above do not include the hardest task that one can take part in. In fact, one of the most challenging tasks that one can take part in is being a parent. While it may seem as though we are the best children that ever lived and likewise make our parents' lives easier, well, let's be real, that's a lie. Parenting is difficult, frustrating, messy, tiring, and everything in between. Despite any obstacles that come in their way, our parents still manage to find a way to help us go wherever we need to go. They believe in us in every moment of the day and support us in everything that we do. As state officers, we receive the opportunity to not only travel around Oregon, but also outside of the country. Even though we are gone throughout most of the year, our parents are still there for us no matter what. They always have words of encouragement and likewise make their mark on us every single day. In a moment, we will have the opportunity to thank our parents for everything that they have done. Mom, no puedo contar las veces que he tenido una gran idea a la que no supiéramos cómo se iba a lograr. Casi nunca salía como yo quisiera, pero no importaba lo que pasaba, tú siempre estabas a mi lado riéndote o celebrando conmigo. Nuestra vida no siempre ha sido la más fácil, pero lo doy gracias a Dios por darme una mamá tan fuerte y cariñosa como tú. Te amo. Eduardo, even though I hate waking up early in the morning, the time I got to go outside and check on the does with you during kidding season or feed the calves with you were some of my favorite memories going up. Watching you be so dedicated towards your career goals and watching you get that dream job you've always wanted has taught me how to work hard for what I want, but to stay humble when I accomplish something. Thank you for being the best big brother a girl could ask for. Love you, dude. Oregon FFA, it is my pleasure to introduce to you my mom, Eufrasia Enriquez, and present her with her honorary Oregon FFA state degree. <laughs> mom and Dad. There aren't enough words to describe all that you've done for me throughout my life. From helping me overcome nearly impossible life challenges to always giving me unconditional love, neither of you two have ever failed me. Dad, thank you so much for always pushing me to best that I can possibly be in everything that I do. And likewise teaching me understand what it means to be kind-hearted and be the best person that I can possibly be. You are the biggest role model in my life. Mom, from helping me with schoolwork to taking me where I need to go and helping me understand what it means to truly be there for someone, I know that I can always rely on you. I know that sometimes life can be hard, but I hope you both know that there are no two other people that I would rather have by my side in this journey. I couldn't ask for better parents, and I love you both so much. Thank you for everything. Love you, sir. Okay, cheers, sir. Oregon FFA, I am pleased to introduce to you my parents, Rick and Jillian Wiesenberg, and present them with their honorary Oregon FFA state degree.
Mom and Dad, thank you for being the best parents that I could ever ask for. From the days of making sure I ate all my green beans at dinner to making sure I kept my grades up in high school, I have truly learned a lot from you. Mom, thank you for teaching the way that I can love people. The way you treat people with your personality, character, and who you are is something that I look up to. You are always there for me, and I'm thankful for your continual support. Dad, thank you for teaching me how I should live my life. You taught me what work is, you always give me good advice, and you are my number one role model. Finally, Courtney, thank you for being the best sister. You always have a smile on that face, and you teach me how to find joy in the little things. You may have gotten me in trouble a few times, but I've done the same to you way more, so we're equal. I love you, sis. And to my family as a whole, thank you for the endless love and support that you have blessed me with. I love you all. Oregon FFA, I am pleased to introduce you to my parents, Tim and Tammy Reinierson, and present them their honorary state degrees. Mom, thank you for helping me correct my papers, even if I wasn't necessarily helpful in the process. Thank you for always making sure I was on schedule when I was behind on my grades. And most of all, thank you for demonstrating what love is to me constantly. I know that I wouldn't be here today without the love and patience that you've shown me. Dad, thank you for teaching me to hunt and fish and love the outdoors. Thank you for always supporting me in whatever I've set my mind to. And thank you for teaching me what it means to be a man of God. I know that the values you've instilled in me and the love you've shown me will carry me far in life, all because of you. Kinsley and Brian, thank you for teaching me what it means to be patient and for being little sisters that I can be proud of. I know the future will take you a long ways, so I can't wait to see what it holds for you. Taylor and Curtis, thank you for always being there for me when I'm feeling overwhelmed. I know I can always turn to you when I need support. Thank you to everyone, and I love you all more than I could ever say. Oregon FFA, it is my pleasure to introduce to you, you to my parents, Bob and Wendy Kemble, and present them with their honorary state degrees. Mom, also known as Deborah, also known as Superwoman. Raising three girls on your own is no easy task, but one that you made look easy, especially when it came to us three girls. Whether it was hauling my horse to a barrel race, standing ringside at every stock show, or just listening to every speech, you've always believed in me and my ability to succeed. Because of you, I know every word to every Trisha Yearwood song ever, and I know that I can do anything if I set my mind to it. Thank you for being so steadfast, so faithful, and always pointing me in the way of Jesus. You truly live your life wholeheartedly. I love you. Abby and Libby, we may be three very different flowers, but I'm so grateful that we were grown in the same garden. Libby, thank you for making breakfast for the team and for waiting for me patiently on the steps every time I get to come home. It's been a joy to watch you fall in love with the FFA the same way that I did. Abby, I know that we may have sworn to be mortal enemies growing up, but I do consider you to be one of my greatest allies and friends. Your drive and your dedication for the things that you love are unmatched, and I cannot wait to watch your life unfold. To my mom and my sisters, the three greatest women that I know, and all the girl power in the world, I love you, and thank you for being mine. Oregon FFA, it's a pleasure to introduce to you my mom, Kelly Rooker, and present her with her honorary state FFA degree. Mom, I know you always apologize that people say I look and act just like you but I take it as an incredible compliment. You've taught me how to be a strong woman with a soft heart for others. 
You've reminded me to keep my head held high in times of struggles and instilled in me the desire to serve others regardless of my own issues. You've shown me how to follow my heart while acting with grace and genuineness. Thank you for being my cheerleader, biggest fan, best friend, and the role model for the woman I dream to be. Dad, where do I even begin? Thank you for always making me laugh till my tummy hurts. Whenever I came home from a rough day, I could always count on you to make me smile. You've shown me how to be steady and patient. Every time I wrecked a tractor or two, you always came over, hugged me, and made me get back to work. I pray that one day I have a heart as kind and forgiving as you. To both my parents and all my crazy siblings, thank you for showing me how to love others unconditionally, for challenging me to chase after my dreams, and for listening to my nonstop chatter. Most importantly, thank you for loving a child as stubborn, determined, and weird as me. I love all of you. Oregon FFA, I'm pleased to introduce you to my parents, Tracy and Nanette Lehman, and present them with their honorary state degrees. As they exit the stage, let's give all of the parents who have helped us this year a round of applause. In the National FFA organization, the number of opportunities for growth are far too many to count. Ranging from SAEs to CDEs all the way to classroom work, there is always some project or task for someone to participate in. In the classroom, we receive grades for hard work, and in CDEs, we receive big, different colored banners. In the SAE category, students can receive proficiency awards. As we have been hearing and will continue to hear the results for this year's career development events, it is now time to recognize the students who have worked long and hard on their supervised agricultural experience and are now eligible for a proficiency award. Proficiency awards are given to students who have gained valuable skills from their supervised projects that they will also be able to apply to their careers later in life. These awards would not have been possible without the help of our amazing sponsors. Let's give a round of applause to our sponsors and this year's proficiency winners. <laughs> to receive a proficiency award, one must have an immense amount of desire and determination. Due to the great variation of projects, the requirements for success are just as varied as the projects themselves. It is very easy in this world for an individual to say that they would like to be successful, but in the end, only a small percentage of that amount of those people will actually, in fact, reach that, that level of success. These students are incredibly dedicated and have made it so far. Let's give them another round of applause. <laughs> Mr. Secretary, would you please read the names of this year's proficiency recipients? Agricultural Education. This award is sponsored by Oregon State University's Agricultural Education Department and Northwest Farm Credit Services at the state level, along with the James F. Lincoln Arc Welding Foundation and Tulsa Welding School at the national level. The finalists are... From Union, McKenna Parsons. From Mitchell, Samantha Starner. From Elkton, Grace Whitley. I am proud to announce the winner of the 2018 Proficiency in Agricultural Education, McKenna Parsons of the Union FFA chapter. The winner has invested over 400 hours working with the Ag in the Classroom, teaching every student in kindergarten through sixth grade. They expanded agriculture lessons by organizing an outdoor school for 120 students at OSU Research Center. Congratulations, McKenna. Agricultural Mechanics Design and Fabrication. This award is sponsored by J.R. Carlson Corporation and Barton Laser Leveling at the state level and by Carry On Trailer and Lincoln Electric at the national level. The finalists are 
From Union, Ryan Shoemaker. From Central, Ethan Davis. Please join me in congratulating this year's Ag Mechanics Design and Fabrication winner, Ryan Shoemaker of the Union FFA chapter. The winner works for a construction company as has learned how to frame, sheetrock, build structures, decks, barns, and houses. He has earned over $20,000 in four years learning how to follow a set of plans, use a variety of power tools, and manage risk. Congratulations, Ryan! The Agriculture Mechanics Repair and Maintenance. The award is sponsored by Roaring Springs Ranch and Beaver Coach Sales and Services at the state level and by Chevrolet at the national level. This year's AgriScience Research Proficiency Award goes to Tristan Denning of the Enterprise FFA chapter. This year's winner has worked over 200 hours for a farm supply company maintaining service trucks by changing oil and fluids and also maintaining a clean shop for the company. The winner has also restored a 1979 Kensworth log truck, logging almost 80 hours of repairs. Congratulations, Tristan! Agriculture Processing The sponsors of the 2018 Agricultural Processing Award are Reagan Garrison and Stallbush Island Farms on the state level, along with the CHS Foundation on the national level. The finalists are from Ontario, Valerie Rodriguez. From Bonanza, Lupe Ortiz. I am proud to announce that the winner of the 2018 Placement in Agricultural Processing is Valerie Rodriguez of the Ontario FFA Chapter. This year's award winner, winner works for Partners Produce Processing Onions and Managing Onion Sales. Her ability to communicate and manage time is critical to, his bo to her boastful $9,000 earnings over the last three years. Congratulations, Valerie. AgriScience Research. This award is sponsored by Oregon FFA Alumni and Harvest Capital Company at the state level and by FMC and National FFA Foundation at the national level. This year's AgriScience Research Proficiency Award goes to Courtney Bailey of the Joseph FFA Chapter. The winner of this award saw a need in their community, pulled key communicators and acted. In part of their research project, they surveyed a, their hometown for data on pollinators and plants that attract pollinators and calculated the plant need around the new beehives purchased with the Living to Serve grant. Congratulations, Courtney. Agricultural Sales. The Agricultural Sales Proficiency Award is sponsored at the state level by the Harvest Capital Company along with Crop Production Services, Valent, Provimi North America, and Fastenal at the national level. The finalists are from Oregon, Brian Meekins. From Nissa, Nathan Cooper. From Eagle Point, Allison Scheffler. This year's Agricultural Sales Proficiency Award goes to Allison Scheffler of the Eagle Point FFA Chapter. The winner partners with their brother, raising market hogs and selling meat to local restaurants and patrons. They have increased their scope from 11 head to 40 head in just three years with a cash sales of $22,000. Congratulations, Allison. Agricultural Services. The Agricultural Services Proficiency Award is sponsored at the state level by Sierra Cascade Nursery and Harvest Capital Company and at the national level by Stanley Black & Decker Incorporated. The finalists are from Union, Levi Obendorf. From Adrian, Cheyenne Allaire. The winner of the 2018 Agricultural Services Award is Levi Obendorf of the Union FFA Chapter. The winner shows an income of over $9,000 in just two years and 50 hours of scissor lift operation. Working for Performance Mechanical, he has recorded over 2.5 miles of laying and fusing pipe as well as 1,500 feet of air duct system work. Congratulations, Levi! Beef Production Entrepreneurship the Beef Production Entrepreneurship Proficiency Award is sponsored at the state level by Lyle and Iris Mann and Northwest Farm Credit Services and by Rabo Agrifinance Agri and Merck Animal Health at the national level. The finalists are from North Powder, Samuel Pointer. From Yamhill Carlton, Nicholas Sheridan. 
From Vail, Kyla Wright. From Lakeview, Cotter Schollenberger. And from Oakland, Ellie Kanegi. This year's Beef Production Entrepreneurship Award goes to Cotter Schollenberger of the Lakeview FFA chapter. This winner boasts cash sales of over $75,000, raising and selling stalker cattle through online video sales. He also extends his passion for beef cattle by also operating his own herd of Angus cross cows and raises steers for the county fair. Congratulations, Cotter! Beef Production Placement. This award is sponsored by the Clackamas County Farm Bureau on the state level and nationally by Red Brand. The finalists are from Pendleton, Josie Cartmel. From Imbler, Sam Fessler. The recipient of the 2018 Beef Production Placement Proficiency Award, Sam Fessler of the Imbler FFA Chapter. The winner has earned over $5,000 working at a local sale yard, loading and unloading, tagging and IDing cattle. She, she, she applies principles of veterinary care, safe animal handling, flexibility, and adaptability to her job every day. Congratulations, Sam. Dairy Production Entrepreneurship. The sponsors of the Dairy Production Proficiencies are Mr. and Mrs. Dennis, Miller, Dennis Martin of Nyssa, Oregon, and Geffen Mesher at the state level, and New Holland on the national level. The finalists are from Dallas, J.D. Brownell. From Tillamook, Josh Seals. From Nyssa, Kelsey Tucker. From Glide, Nehemiah Donovan. I am proud to announce that the 2018 Dairy Production Entrepreneurship goes to Josh Seals of the Tillamook FFA chapter. The winner has earned $23,000 in the last three years milking 20 head of Jersey cows. He reports an inventory of $22,000 in livestock and lists skills in livestock breeding, evaluation, and biosecurity. Congratulations, Josh. Dairy Production Placement. The Dairy Production Placement Proficiency Award is sponsored by Gavin Mesher on the state level and by Coon North America and NASCO International on the national level. The finalists are from Nyssa, McKenna Osman. From SIO, Ethan Olson. I am pleased to announce the winner of the 2018 Dairy Production Placement Proficiency Award is Ethan Olson of the SIO FFA chapter. The winner has worked on a, for a local farm raising dairy calves for resale and boasts over 4,000 hours. Responsibilities include feeding calves twice a day, maintaining clean facilities, treating sick calves, and developing a more efficient feeding system. Congratulations, Ethan! Diversified Agriculture Production. This award is sponsored by Mog Family Incorporated, Mog Farms Incorporated, Wilco, and Norpac on the state level, and by Ram Trucks on the national level. The finalists are from Ione, Austin Mortar. From Crook County, Cade Ostrander. From Enterprise, Sydney Stonebrink. And from North Clackamas, Hannah Raynham. The winner of this year's Diversified Agriculture Production Award is Hannah Raynham of the North Clackamas FFA chapter. This year's winner started working on her school land lab as a greenhouse worker and was soon hired as a student employee for the chapter's 10-acre student-operated farm. She found a love with animal science and has expanded her SAE to include market steers, goats, and sheep. Congratulations, Hannah. Diversified Crop Production. This award is sponsored by Corn Farms and Northwest Transplants at the state level and CHS Foundation and National Crop Insurance Services and Growing America's Farmers at the national level. The finalists are from Ione, Emily Taylor. From St. Paul, Noe Pena. From Enterprise, Kaylee Melville. From Canby, Lauren Iverson. And from Ontario, Halen Miller. I am proud to announce the 2018 winner of the, Diver of the Diversified Crop Production Award is Lauren Iverson of the Canby FFA Chapter. 
This year's winner has grossed almost $5,000 in two years, working at the Wooden Shoe Tulip Festival, helping in the production of tulips and hemp. She lists skills such as inventory management, record keeping, and knowledge of plant anatomy. Congratulations, Lauren. Diversified Livestock Production. This award is sponsored by Joel and Vicki Price and Wilco at the state level and Wall Clipper Corporation and Tractor Supply Company on the national level. The finalists are from Cascade, Tara Brill. From Legrand, Jacob Byron. From Perrydale, Timothy Fairchild. From Canby, Olivia Palacios. From Tillamook, Brody Queen. From Bonanza, Paige Peterson. From Sio, Megan Griffith. The winner of the, the Diversified Livestock Production Proficiency Award is Tara Brill of the Cascade FFA Chapter. The winner raises quality animals in the area of swine, boar goats, and rabbits. They have increased their net income by four times in the two years. Congratulations, Tara. Environmental Science and Natural Resources. This year's Environmental Science and Natural Resources Proficiency Award is sponsored by the Country Natural Beef and Beaver Coach Sales and Service at the state level and by CHS at the national level. The finalists are from North Clackamas, Hannah Love. From Lost River, Nolan Britton. Congratulations to the 2018 Environmental and Natural Resources Award winner, Hannah Love of the North Clackamas FFA Chapter. This year's winner has invested over 400 hours working with sixth grade students as an outdoor school counselor. She's responsible for teaching students fundamentals of conservation, healthy ecosystems, and dependent socializations. Congratulations, Hannah. Equine Science Placement. The Equine Science Placement Proficiency Award is sponsored by Kevin and Angelique White and VSI at the state level and by Tartar Farm and Ranch Equipment and Tractor Supply Company at the national level. The finalists are from Vale, Tessa McFetridge. The winner of the 2018 Equine Science Proficiency Award is Tessa McFetridge of the Vale FFA Chapter. The winner has logged 1,400 hours training and riding horses, increasing her horsemanship skills while training other horses' valuable ground training skills. She says that one of her greatest accomplishments is training three horses since they were weaned. Congratulations, Tessa! The Forage Production Award is sponsored by the Oregon Seed Council and Oak Park Farms on the state level and by the Claws of America on the national level. The finalists are... From Cook County, Cade Ostrander. From Enterprise, Trevor McFetridge. And from Vale, Alexis Sheffield. The winner of the Forge Production Award is awarded Trevor McFetridge of the Enterprise FFA Chapter. The winner has accumulated 1,000 hours and earned over $10,000 in three summers working for a 600-acre alfalfa farm. Daily tasks include setting hand and wheel pipes, greasing equipment, baler maintenance, spraying, and baling. Congratulations, Trevor! Fruit Production. This award is sponsored by Bradley Vineyards and Northwest Farm Credit Services on the state level and AgroFresh and DuPont Company at the national level. The finalists are from Union, Ashton Wright. Artemy Ivanov. From Amity, Ali Brutke. And from Rogue River, Andy Herrings. The winner for this year's Fruit Production Proficiency Award is Ashton Wright of the Union FFA Chapter. This year's winner has grossed over $11,000 working for a family farm harvesting strawberries, raspberries, cherries, and blackberries. Over the course of three years, the winner has grown in her responsibilities, including selling produce at the local farmer's market and serving as, as a supervisor. Congratulations, Ashton. Goat Production. 
This award is sponsored by Landon and Lucas Baum of 2B Farms and Barton Laser Leveling at the state level and by Bicard Corporation and Tractor Supply Company at the national level. The finalists are from Pendleton, Macy Russell. From Silverton, Petrina Bukite. From Perrydale, Timothy Fairchild. From Malala, Haley McLeod. And from Vale, Isabel Segra. Please welcome the recipient of the GOAT Production Award, Petrina Bukite of the Silverton FFA Chapter. The winner of this award has increased her, gro her goat herd size from 13 to 35 in one year's time and increased her kidding percentage by 220%. Her responsibilities include breeding, kidding, showing, training, vaccinating, and showing. Congratulations, Petrina. Grain Production. The Grain Production Proficiency Award is sponsored by the Blown Away Ranch, CHS, and Harvest Capital Company on the state level, and by Valent USA and the BASF on the national level. The finalists are, from Hepner, Alex Lindsay. From Enterprise, Kaylee Melville. From Nissa, Sailor Hartley. This year's winner of the Grain Production Proficiency Award goes to Kaylee Melville of the Enterprise FFA Chapter. The winner works on her family's 3,000 acre farm growing wheat, barley, and oats. One of the main markets of their crop is a Jewish bakery in Brooklyn, New York, which requires specialty harvesting techniques and rituals. Congratulations, Kylie. Home and or community development. The Home and or Community Development Proficiency Award is sponsored by Carhar at the state level and national level. The finalists are from Irrigan, Ethan Greer. From Union, Riley Bruce. From Malala, Artemy Ivanov. I am proud to announce that Artemy Ivanov of the Malala FFA chapter is this year's winner of the Home and or Community Development Proficiency. This year's winner approaches community development by investing 500 hours raising money for community members in need, serving as a coordinator of Share the Love. Through hard work, they have inspired their community and school to raise $82,000 this February to support local families. Congratulations, Artemy. Nursery Operations. It is sponsored on the state level by the Hermiston FFA Alumni and Northwest Farm Credit Services, along with New Farm and Valent USA Corporation on the national level. The finalists are from Silverton, Abby Hoke. From Wallawa, Ashlyn Young. The winner of the Nursery Operations Proficiency Award is Abigail Hoke of the Silverton FFA Chapter. This year's winner is following in her family's footsteps in the nursery industry, learning the ropes and increasing her responsibilities to include propagation and inventory. What started as an unpaid, uh, unpaid placement experience has grown into a paid experience, maintaining the goals of her family's business. Congratulations, Abby. Outdoor Recreation. The Outdoor Recreation Proficiency Award is sponsored by Les Schwab Tire Centers on the state level and Yamaha Motor Corporation at the national level. The finalists are from Hepner, Alex Lindsay. From Union, Ellie Clark. I am proud to announce that this year's winner of the 2018 Outdoor Recreation Proficiency Award is Ellie Clark of the Union FFA Chapter. The winner was selected as the queen of the Eastern Oregon Livestock Show and Rodeo and is responsible for promoting the local PRCA Rodeo, Memorial Bull Riding Event, and Paramutual Horse Racing. She is responsible for selling $19,000 worth of rodeo tickets to the oldest show in the Northwest, attending 17, 17 events statewide. Congratulations, Ellie. Poultry Production. This year's Poultry Production Proficiency Award is sponsored by G&D Evers Farms and Wilco at the state level, along with the U.S. Poultry and Egg Association and Tractor Supply Company at the national level. The finalists are from Perrydale, Timothy Fairchild. From North Clackamas, Morgan Meyer. 
and from Nyssa, Joshua Dorothy. The Poultry Production Proficiency Award winner for 2018 is Morgan Meyer of the North Clackamas FFA chapter. The recipient of this award owns and manages a flock of 17 free-range laying hens and has, and has raised 12 broilers for local county fair. She describes that, pol that poultry evaluation and handling are key to operating a successful poultry flock. Congratulations, Morgan. Sheep Production. The Sheep Production Proficiency Award is sponsored on the state level by Harvest Capital Company and at the national level by the National FFA Foundation. The finalists are from Silverton, Ellie Hansen. From Crook County, Daisy Forseth. From Imbler, Ryan Patterson. From Vale, Heather Deering. From Lakeview, Michaela McKelvey. From Oakland, Austin Van Houten. And from Sio, Rihanna Martin. The 2018 Sheep Production Proficiency Award winner is Ellie Hansen of the Silverton FFA chapter. The winner owns and manages a herd of 16 head of Southdown sheep worth over $7,000. She is constantly trying to improve her herd and recently did a two-week internship in Reproduction Services Group in Indiana. Congratulations, Ellie! Small Animal Production and Care. The award is sponsored by Grange Co-op on the state level and Tractor Supply Company on the national level. The finalists are from Crook County, Ashlyn Hacker. From Perrydale, Grace Kennedy. From Crater, Megan Burkhardt. And from Harrisburg, Cheyenne Calvin. Please congratulate the 2018 Small Animal Production and Care Placement Proficiency Award winner, Ashlyn Hacker of the Crook County FFA Chapter. The winner of this proficiency has cash sales of over $2,000, raising and selling show rabbits. The main responsibilities include animal handling, feeding and maintenance, and monitoring her market projects. Congratulations, Ashlyn! Specialty Animal Production the Specialty Animal Production Proficiency Award is sponsored by Chuck and Bonnie Miller and Geffen Mesher on the state level and by National FFA Foundation at the national level. The finalists are from North Clackamas, Kaylee Benedict. From Ontario, Aiden Kimball. This year's recipient of the Specialty Animal Production Award is Kaylee Benedict of the North Clackamas FFA chapter. The winner has invested over 400 hours training llamas on a 10-acre farm. She, ha she has increased her training herd by four times in the last two years and increased her skills to include animal selection and disease prevention. Congratulations, Kaylee! Specialty Crop Production the award is sponsored at the state level by Oak Park Farms and Beta Seed and the National FFA Foundation at the national level. The finalists are... From Silverton, Byron Kenzie. From Enterprise, Casey Melville. From Canby, Lauren Iverson. From Nissa, Savannah Kessler. I am proud to announce that Byron Kenzie of the Silverton FFA chapter is your 2018 Specialty Crop Production Proficiency winner. The winner of this award is involved with all aspects of a grass seed operation, planting, spraying, harvesting, cleaning, bagging, and trucking. In just two years, she has, she has, he has earned over $20,000 and become proficient in identifying seed, operating heavy, heavy machinery, and maintaining levels of grass seed. Congratulations, Byron. Swine Production. This award is sponsored by Oregon Pork Producers and Wilco at the state level and by Leco Markal and Provimi North America at the national level. The finalists are from Irrigan, Ethan Greer. From Crook County, Raquel Middow. From Dallas, Josie Bennett. From Vale, Dylan Marshall. And from Sutherland, Madeline Higgins. 
The recipient of this year's award is Josephine Bennett of the Dallas FFA chapter. The winner of this award is growing a quality swine herd of eight sows, selling project hogs to local youth. She maintains a herd valued at $13,000 and sales of $23,000 over four years. Congratulations, Josephine. Vegetable production. This award is sponsored at the state level by Hermiston FFA alumni and NORPAC and by Tractor Supply Company and Wilbur Ellis Company on the national level. The finalists are from Cascade, Kimberly Taylor. From Nyssa, Jacob Ashby. The winner of the 2018 Vegetable Production Proficiency Award goes to Kimberly Taylor of the Cascade FFA chapter. The winner has grossed sales of almost $10,000 using the majority of her garden harvest for her family's consumption. She uses her one acre garden harvest for fresh produce and also dehydrates and cans produce for later consumption. Congratulations, Kimberly. Veterinary Science. The Veterinary Science Proficiency Award is sponsored by Veterinary Services Incorporated and the Veterinary Services Incorporated at the national level and by American Veterinary Medical Association, Tractor Supply Company, and Blue Buffalo at the national level. The finalists are from Baker, Megan Toole. From Sherwood, Kaylee Welters. This year's winner for the Veterinary Sciences Proficiency Award is Kaylee Welters of the Sherwood FFA chapter. The winner has worked almost 700 hours in 18 months working for a veterinary hospital as a kennel assistant. She, be, she has become a certified in CPR, assists in small animal restraints, maintains the exam room facilities, and helps to, with basic hospital needs. Congratulations, Kaylee. Wildlife Management. The Wildlife Management Proficiency Award is sponsored by Veterinary Services Incorporated and the Hermiston FFA alumni and Beaver Coach Sales and Services at the state level and by Yamaha Motor Company at the national level. The finalists are from Hepner, Ethan Akers. This year's winner for the Wildlife Management Proficiency Award is Ethan Akers of the Hepner FFA chapter. The winner of this proficiency has logged over 2,600 hours training hounds and fur trapping. His skill includes fur, fur animal con population control, dog training skills, patience, and people skills. Congratulations, Ethan. Equine Science Entrepreneurship. The Equine Science Entrepreneurship Proficiency Award is sponsored by Roaring Springs Ranch and Wilco at the state level and by Tartar Farms and Ranch Equipment and Tractor Supply Company at the national level. The finalist and winner is Ali Brutke from Amity. The winner has logged countless hours training and riding horses, increasing her horsemanship skills while training others' horses' valuable ground training skills. Congratulations, Ali. Please help me thank all of our sponsors and congratulate our Proficiency Award recipients one more time with a round of applause. <laughs> Oregon FFA, we are about to recognize three individuals who have gone above and beyond in their supervised agricultural experiences. The Oregon FFA Agricultural State Star Awards are given to students who have excelled in their proficiency area. These students have dedicated much of their high school career to their supervised agricultural experience. Being able to focus on your project while also being a regular high school student is not an easy task. Between sports practices, school projects, homework, community service, and so much more, students today are very busy individuals. That is why balancing those responsibilities along with their SAE is so impressive. The students here today are very gifted and have exceeded in all expectations in their SAE projects. Today, we will recognize three students for three different divisions for this award. Star Farmer, Star in Agribusiness, and Star in Agricultural Placement. <laughs> Mr. Secretary, would you please read the names of this year's Star Award finalists and recipients? 
The State Star in Agricultural Placement will be presented to the FFA member who has an Outstanding Placement Supervised Agricultural Experience Program. The member's placement experience may be in the areas of production agriculture, agribusiness, or directed laboratory that is not agri-science or natural resource based. The State Star in Agricultural Placement Award is sponsored by Crosby Hop Farms and Harvest Capital Company. The finalists are, from Eagle Point, Maddie Cox. From Hepner, Kobe Doherty. From Ontario, Valerie Rodriguez. And from Malala, Artemy Ivanov. This year's star in agricultural placement is Artemy Ivanov of the Malala FFA chapter. This year's winner has two unique placements. His first placement is a 400-acre berry farm, has led to earnings of nearly $25,000 over the past four years. The winner is involved in all aspects of the berry farm, managing two harvest crews, coordinating schedules, harvest spraying, and machine upkeep. His second placement is deeply rooted in the community, raising over $62,000, serving as the Chair the Love Coordinator. This is a unique community outreach in the Malala area, raising money for families in need every year. Congratulations, Artemy. <laughs> star in Agribusiness. To receive a state star in agribusiness, a member has to have shown outstanding achievements in an agricultural business supervised agricultural experience and have actively participated in FFA. The state star in agribusiness, agri Business Award is sponsored by Mr. Glenn Goshi of Goshi Farms and Barton Laser Leveling. The finalists are from Baker, Augustina Cook. From Eagle Point, Allison Scheffler. From Newburgh, Todd Holloman. This year's star in agribusiness is Allison Scheffler of the Eagle Point FFA chapter. The winner of this award purchases starter pigs regionally, negotiating purchase price, raising, raises them to harvest weight, takes them to a federal inspected plant, and sells the product to local restaurants. This true business entrepreneurship assumes all responsibility by meeting with restaurant owners on a regular basis to ensure the quality of product. She boasts cash, cash sales of $22,000 and still finds time to donate to her local community by donating meat to local booster clubs. Congratulations, Allison. Star Farmer. For members to first be considered for a Star Farmer Award, an FFA member must have earned their state degree or be receiving it in the same year. To receive the honor of a state star in farming, a member must show outstanding achievement in their SAE and have actively involved in the FFA. The State Star Farmer Award is sponsored by Griffin Seed International and Les Schwab Tires. The finalists are from Baker, Duncan McKenzie. From Lakeview, Cotter Schullenberger. From Newburgh, Wayne Barnett. From Vail, Kyla Wright. And from Canby, Devin Thacker. This year's star farmer is Wayne Barnett of the Newburgh FFA chapter. This year's winner over the past four years has increased his gross earnings over 400%, accumulating 2,500 hours in his entrepreneurial swine enterprise. His total net worth is nearly $40,000. He plans on turning his operation into a profitable full-time operation in the future. Congratulations, Wayne. And now, for the best of the best, Oregon FFA, our 2018 Stars Over Oregon, state star in ag placement, Artemy Ivanov. State star in agricultural business, Allison Scheffler. And your state star farmer, Wayne Barnett. 
Congratulations to our 2018 star winners. And thank you to all our sponsors whose assistance makes it possible for us to honor such excellence in agriculture. To introduce our next speaker, please help me welcome Abby and Olivia Rooker and Bailey Cameron to the podium. Good evening, Oregon FFA. My name is Olivia Rooker. I'm Abby Rooker. And my name is Bailey Cameron, and we are standing before you all today to introduce you to a person who we know as a sister, and as a friend, and to the person who is a big fan of red dirt and sunflowers from our home state of Arizona, and one who truly loves Jesus. I first met Emma in the fall of 2009 at the Coconino County Fair in Flagstaff, Arizona. We first spoke when my awkward, introverted self said hi in response to her extroverted hey as she was staring at me while I fed my lamb at the lamb barn. Little did I know that this outgoing girl in pigtails would become the crazy, intense, beautiful person that she is to this day. That I would call one of my best friends throughout the following years. From writing letters to each other before we had phones, to living several states apart, to traveling to Haiti together, Emma is a friend that I am very proud to know. She is full of gumption, grit, integrity, and bravery. I have never known Emma to be anything less than these qualities. She has inspired me and I know that she has and will continue to inspire others. Thank you, Emma, for being you, and I look forward to our many adventures in Southern California. I remember the first time you practiced the FFA Creed in the living room, and I literally thought you were crazy, but I listened to you anyway. But then that turned into hours of listening to you practice your speeches over and over again, and that led you to go into national convention to compete and to many other adventures. And now, here I am today in my own blue corduroy jacket, or as you call it, my poly pocket size FFA jacket, to introduce you to the, blue, the whole state of blue corduroy. Thanks for always inspiring me to have a passion for the FFA and to grow in my walk with Christ. Thanks for teaching me to never break the seals in my pockets of my FFA jacket and to love people unconditionally. Our song will always be Brown Eyed Girl because we got those brown eyes from our daddy. And if he was here right now, he would be so, so proud of you. Emma, you have always been the one to make me look like the devil child, even though you were nowhere close to an angel. I am proud to call you my sister, and I am so proud of what you have become. Good luck with your preacher lady stuff, and you're always welcome on my couch. But this intro would not be complete without a special message from our friend, Riley Dry, who could unfortunately not be here. So Emma, these words are from Riley. A couple years ago, Emma and I were driving around thinking about life and our options and where we wanted to go. I remember her saying something along the lines that she didn't want to settle and just do what was considered normal and safe. She wanted to actually do something. I am so proud to say that she's definitely chased that dream and has done something amazing and new. Bailey, Olivia, and I are so proud to introduce to you our 2017-2018 State Vice President, Emma, Emma Rooker. Rooker. At 20 years of age, I'm still looking for a dream. A war's already waged for my destiny But you've already won the battle And you've got great plans for me Though I can't always see Cause I got a couple dents in my fender Got a couple rips in my jeans Try to fit the pieces together but perfection is my enemy And on my own I'm so clumsy But on your shoulders I can see I'm free to be me I 
When I was just a girl I thought I had it figured out See my life would turn out right And I'd make it here somehow But things don't always come that easy And sometimes I would die in my jeans Try to fit the pieces together But perfection is my enemy And on my own I'm so clumsy But on your shoulders I can see I'm free to be me And you're free to be could smell the sweet aroma of honeysuckle drifting in through my bedroom window. The sound of crickets and coyotes resonated in the near distance. It was a warm July night in 2005. I was six years old and up way past my bedtime. My little sisters were fast asleep and I, being the oldest, was up late at 8.30 p.m. <laughs> anticipant of their promise of stargazing with my parents. There's just one little catch. We had to climb out the second story window and onto the roof. As a first grader, heights were my biggest fear. Next to chickens and lightning storms. I stood there at the window watching as my dad climbed out first, but was reluctant to take his hand when he reached back through for my own. Clearly, in that moment, he saw the terror on my face, but did not for much comfort. Instead, he said very seriously, Em, if you scream, you'll wake your sisters up, and you'll have to go back to bed. Suddenly, there was a deal on the table, and I sat there for a moment, carefully considering my options. Sure, I could go back to bed, crawling back into the safety of my strawberry shortcake sheets. But in doing so, would miss out on this long awaited night. Finally, I made my decision. Taking a deep breath, put my best foot forward, stepped over the windowsill and on to the roof, into the safety of his arms. No screaming and no crying. To my relief, once I was there, the hardest part was over. And I spent the rest of the evening locked safely in his embrace. Not fearfully looking down at the ground that seemed miles and miles away, but up at the sparkling night sky. Listening as he showed me every constellation that he knew. Memorizing them so that one day, wherever I was, I would be able to look up and see them too. As I look back on that night, I realized that in that moment, my dad was teaching me what it meant to take chances in spite of my fears. Moments like these often carry more weight in our lives than we realize. Moments where a choice must be made between fear and what lies beyond that fear? In those moments, my dad was gently instilling within me the courage to embrace the adventures in front of me with my whole heart. Over the past 19 years, I found that living wholeheartedly is still just as important, but has proven to be a little bit harder. Heights still terrify me, and you can pay me to hold a chicken. But oftentimes, as we grow older, fears represent themselves in different and bigger ways. Let's get real. Asking that one special person to prom, sign up for an honors class, or even taking our driver's test can terrify us to our very core. Sometimes our fears are incredibly significant. 
like losing a parent, a friend, or never receiving that college acceptance letter that we've always dreamed of. Sometimes just the very thought of facing our fears that intimidates us the most. Organ FFA, what do we need to face tonight? One of the most significant fears in my own life appeared on the horizon in February 2011. When I was in middle school, my dad had begun the fight against alarming changes in his mental state. His diagnosis was far above what I had the ability to comprehend, but I knew this. His own brain had turned against him, and my family was greatly impacted by it. Seizures and lapses of memory became a regular occurrence for him, and my family was faced with the difficult option of brain surgery. After weeks of research, appointments, contemplation, and prayer, my parents set the date. Positive about the outcome and hopeful of returning to life as we knew it. However, during that operation, something went horribly wrong. A major artery was damaged with his scalpel accidentally, causing blood to cover his brain for far too long. A two-week-long recovery turned into a month-long road, and my dad walked out of the hospital a different man a different father, and ultimately a stranger to me. Organ FFA, if I am telling you the truth, he was never the same again. And the accumulation of his long-term health issues eventually claimed his life when I was 17. In that moment, In that moment, for the first time, my heart no longer felt whole. Most of us do not have to search far in order to recall a memory in which we lost someone or something dear to us. Though my dad was no longer suffering, the world had fallen at my feet. And I felt that I was left to pick up the pieces. I was standing at a crossroads, as many of us have. Just like that July night on my roof, I had to make a choice. But this time, the stakes were higher. In my moment, one way seemed easier than the other. It was the safe, comfortable way. It led to bitterness, blame, and resentment over my circumstances. After all, it wasn't my fault. The other way was narrow, less crowded, more difficult. It meant overcoming the hand that I had been dealt, but led to forgiveness and freedom. Something deep inside of me told me to choose the narrow way. And while I am confident it is the best way, I'm not standing here to tell you that I have always stayed the course. There have been moments in my life when I have chosen to believe that successful people only come from intact, happy families and that I didn't stand a chance. Moments when I have excused myself from the idea of being strong, vulnerable, or brave because of my history. In those moments when defeat feels so incredibly close, one question challenges my thoughts. Can we truly live wholeheartedly when pieces of our lives are missing? 
in this convention hall, take a moment to recognize that there are thousands of stories spinning around this room. We cannot buy into the lie that we are the only ones or that our stories carry more weight than others. In reality, we're all broken, imperfect, partial people leading imperfect, partial lives. If I had to guess, the hearts inside of this room don't always feel whole. But tattered and torn and hurting, hollowed by things like anxiety, abuse, depression, divorce, loss, and loneliness. This may be the way of the world, but it does not have to determine the trajectory of our lives. Our stories will only be sad stories unless we choose to find meaning and redemption within them. This autumn, I met a member who truly lives her life wholeheartedly. Her name is Trinity Morrell from the Days Creek FFA chapter. At the tender age of seven, Trinity was diagnosed with cystic fibrosis. Cystic fibrosis is a genetic progressive disease that causes lung infections and limits one's ability to breathe. Cystic fibrosis is inevitably fatal and there is no known cure. But even as her life hung from a thread and her health worsens, Trinity's parents refused to give up hope. In the midst of all of this, they returned to the hospital for more tests. Only this time, the results came back negative. The cystic fibrosis was completely and miraculously absent from her body. Today, her health has been restored and she's thriving as an FFA member, a softball player, and a talented vocalist. Yeah. Trinity is the only known survivor of cystic fibrosis. Her story is incredible. But we can't deny that all stories don't end the same. I know that mine didn't. But through desperation and loss, miracles and triumph, we have to choose how we will live our lives. How will we live wholeheartedly? For me, fully living my life means remembering those stars. Recalling that moment when my dad taught me what it meant to take chances and live with my whole heart. For me, living wholeheartedly means not placing blame on the doctors that made a mistake that cost my father everything. Living wholeheartedly means turning again and again to forgiveness and healing, to be better and not bitter. Living wholeheartedly means taking that first step on to the roof over and over again jumping into the arms of my heavenly father, knowing that he'll be there always to steady me. Organ FFA living wholeheartedly means choosing to believe that our lives and our stories mean something and have worth, even though there are chapters and pages missing. During a pivotal moment of my life, one of my very best friends, Riley Dry, pointed me to a verse in the book of Psalms, chapter 71, verse 14. It reads, as for me, I will always have hope. Simple, yet so powerful. 
to each beating heart who is in this room, I assure you that your life is a worthy cause and one that is worthy of hope. We have to be the people who, despite our brokenness, keep persisting. We have to be the people who say so long to the status quo and rewrite our history the way that we would have it told. We have to be the people who choose forgiveness over vengeance and be the reset button in our family trees. We have to be the people who choose the narrow way and believe that our brightest days are yet to come. You may feel knocked down, but that doesn't mean that you're counted out. You may feel broken, but that does not mean you aren't qualified or equipped to do incredible things. The way that it always was does not have to be good enough for us anymore. Organ FFA, we have to choose to be the people who, understands that, who understand that we were not made to be victims of our circumstances, but survivors in spite of them. I know that I live with a vision. I'm covered. Emma, your bright personality and vibrant lifestyle have brought cheer to Oregon FFA. Your willingness to serve others and enjoy life will take you far on your endeavors. You treat every situation as an adventure, just as everyone should. We thank you for your successful year of service and countless memories made along the way. The Oregon FFA is grateful for all of your efforts and we wish you well in your future. Emma, whenever I think of fun, witty, and kind, you instantly come to mind. I am grateful for the past year, abundant with memorable experiences. You have been an integral part of my years in the FFA, and I am confident you are an inspiration to others as well. The time I will always remember is when you walked with me in the noise parade, I lost my voice, and you said, maybe you should yell a bit louder. On behalf of every member in Oregon FFA, I wish to express my wholehearted thanks for all you have done this year. You are a steadfast inspiration and your compassionate attitude lifts the spirits of everyone around you. I wish you the best of luck on your future endeavors. Emma, there is a lot I could say, but I'm just gonna try and narrow it down. Thank you so much for your positive attitude and always bringing it with you wherever we go for always being, always being willing to talk about life wherever and whenever and being one of the most adventurous people I know. I know you're, you are going to do unimaginably great things. Love, Gabby, Wade, Courtney, Jensen, and Lee. Oregon FFA, your 2017-2018 State Vice President, Emma Rucker. what you gonna do. The world is watching you. Every day the choices you make. Say what you are and who your heart beats for It's an open door Every year, each of the 12 FFA districts in Oregon selects one individual to serve on a committee, formerly known as the Nominating Committee. This committee is given the incredibly difficult task to work with and interview up to 30 individuals in order to help determine who should serve on the upcoming year's Oregon FFA State Officer Team. Each member on the committee has been working very diligently to accomplish this task. From the beginning of convention, each officer candidate has continu continually been working to prove their desire to serve the Oregon FFA Association and its members. From challenging interviews to presentations and so much more, every single candidate has truly been given a workload that only a few would actually try to accomplish. Every single candidate here at convention has done an amazing job so far. 
we will now get the opportunity to hear from the committee chairman and listen to the names of the top 10 candidates for the upcoming Oregon FFA State Officer Team. Yeah. Please help me welcome this year's committee chairman from the Culver FFA chapter, Katie Lynn Duff. Good evening, Oregon FFA. I've had the pleasure to serve as the 2018 Oregon FFA Nominating Committee Chairman, and on behalf of the committee, I'm excited to announce to you the top 10 state officer candidates for the 2018-2019 Oregon FFA State Officer Team. But first, I want to recognize our nominating committee, our committee coordinators, and our committee advisor, Mr. Matt Liscombe, for all the work they've put in these past three days. Please. And now, the time you've all been waiting for. Oregon FFA, your 2018-2019 top 10 state officer candidates in alphabetical order. From Hepner, Alex Lindsay. From Eagle Point, Andrew Gamurkin. From Crater, David Gladman. From Camby, Devin Thacker. From Hermiston, Dylan Westfall. From Bend, Holly Sylvie. From Sutherland, Mackenzie Price. From Central Lynn, Maddie Nushenwander. From Nissa, Nathan Cooper. And finally, from Adrian, Sunday Spillman. As they exit the stage, thank you, Katie Lynn, and congratulations to the top 10 candidates. <laughs> Elections will be here, will be right here tomorrow morning with the delegate check-in at 7 a.m. Delegates, please remember you must be early. Whether it's trying to find our lost car keys or trying to figure out how we're gonna ask our crusher on a date, we have seen just how easy it can be to get lost in the craziness of life. However, as we have seen in this session, it is important to stay calm during life's most difficult moments because although we may think we may not have all the answers, they are actually right in front of us. Our FFA members have taught us the importance of staying calm during life's most difficult moments. From difficult SAEs to writing and delivering complex speeches and so much more, we have had the opportunity to see the progress of students across Oregon as they continue to solve problems, use the answers that are right in front of them, and above all, make their mark. We recognize the amazing participants of extemporaneous speaking and advanced and beginning parliamentary procedure. We had the chance to listen to our state vice president, Emma Rooker, give her retirement address wholehearted, where she taught us how to live life to the fullest, despite any negative circumstances. We heard the results for the 2018 State Proficiency Awards and Stars in Agriculture across Oregon. We also thanked our parents for always giving us unconditional love and support and feeding us. And lastly, 
we were introduced to the top 10 individuals who are still on track for a position as an Oregon FFA state officer. Even though we are closing in on the final session of the 90th Oregon FFA State Convention, tomorrow will be just as busy as today. We will hear the results for job interview, marketing plan, farm business management, and so much more. We will hear the retirement address of our state reporter, Lee Wiesenberg. That's me. <laughs> And finally, we will be installing the 2018-2019 Oregon FFA State Officer Team. Be sure to be here tomorrow morning at 11.30 a.m. as we begin to close convention and prep for another amazing year. This is it, Oregon FFA. Let's make our mark! Mr. Secretary, do you have a record of any further business which should now be transacted? Yes, I do, Madam Vice President. Food for All would like to give a big thanks to you, Oregon FFA. Over 837 individuals and 60 chapters helped in our Days of Service campaign. Special thanks to the Mohawk, Perrydale, and Sheridan FFA chapters. There were over 61,000 pounds of food packaged for over 30 communities. If a chapter did not receive their t-shirts, please talk to Hutch, Ms. Lorenz, or Mr. Neese to make arrangements to get your t-shirts. Now, Oregon FFA, please give a huge round of applause for the tireless efforts of Kirk Hutchinson and Roy Whitman for all their work with Food for All. We would like to remind members and advisors that art can now be picked up in the Middle Sister and Agri-Science projects can be picked up in the South Sister Hall. Hey, Mr. Denig, your chapter would like to thank you for being such an amazing advisor and spending your birthday with us, your favorite FFA chapter. Happy birthday from Abby, Darby, and your Pine Eagle FFA chapter. There's a lost phone at the secretary station. Mommy and Boothang are trying to get a hold of you. Delegates, please be sure to check in at 7 a.m. for elections. Please be early to ensure a smooth process. That is all, Madam Vice President. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Does any member know of any new or unfinished business which should probably come before this meeting? We are about to adjourn this, the 90th Oregon FFA State Convention. As we mingle with others, let us be diligent in labor, just in our dealings, courteous to everyone, and above all, honest and fair in the game of life. Fellow members and guests, join me in a salute to our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Adjourned.